Uh, so let's get started. Um, our next talk is by Juanita Duque Rosero, and she'll tell us about uh, triangular modular curves of low genus. Great. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. So thanks for, to the organizers for putting this together. I would have put 15 ants, but it was too much. So <laughs> doing a triangle is very on, on topic. So yeah, this is joint work with John Boyd. And I cannot start a talk in a conference like this without talking about elliptic curves. So this is part of our motivation. Why do we want to study triangular modular curves? And then we are going to start uh, looking at uh, elliptic curves. So our favorite Legendre family of elliptic curves that looks like this, y squared equals x times x minus one times x minus c. So we have a parameter t that is different than zero, one, and infinity. Uh, what's so special about these elliptic curves for us? They are cyclic covers of P1 that are branch, branched at, two, at four points. And then they are parametrized by the, curve, the modular curve X2, right? That is P1. Here we have a picture of gamma 2. And then we can consider additional level of structure in these elliptic curves by considering curves like X0 of N or um, X1 of N, right? So uh, what, what if we want to generalize this story? We can think about curves that look just like our Legendre curves, but we are varying the exponents a little bit. So we are considering y to the m equals uh, the same factors, but then we can have exponents e naught, e1, and et. Again, these are curves with a parameter t that, uh, different than 0, 1, and infinity. Uh, what is the same is they are, again, cyclic covers of p1 that are branched at four points. Uh, but also these curves have cyclic, a cyclic group of automorphisms uh, defined over Q, Z, I, M when you're just multiplying Y up by an M root of unity. And then from these, we can construct a free variety. So thanks, Karen, for talking about this. And then um, this is just an isogeny factor of the Jacobian of these curves. And the family of primes of these curves extends to a family of abelian varieties over P1. Okay. So uh, what triangular modular curves do for us is that uh, the extension of this family of primes is actually parametrized by these triangular modular curves. So understanding them uh, means understanding these varieties. And another motivation, why do you want to study triangular modular curves is that triangle groups, uh, thanks to their modes program, um, relate to approaches to solve the generalized Fermat equation, x to the a plus y to the b plus z to the c equals zero. Okay, I haven't told you what a triangle group uh, is, but uh, that's the idea of the motivation. Okay, and then what we are going to get in this talk is to this theorem. If you don't understand what's happening, that's okay. We're going to back, go back to it at the end. And then what we do is to prove that um, for for a tri triangle groups and ideal speed, there are finally many curves that look like X naught, like this. We're going to define them in a second. And then we have point, uh, we have counts on how many curves of low genus there are. Okay. So this is a big two hour magma implementation. And then everything that is in gray boxes, you are welcome to ask about, but I won't mention it for this talk. So, so what we, is P fixed or there? Uh, P varies, but yes, varies. we are so going to, yes, so we're going to get back to it in a second. Yeah, but thanks, good question. Um, great, so before we get to the theorem, I just want to start the studying triangle groups. So if you haven't seen a triangle group, that just a uh, group with this presentation, so it's generated by three elements of orders A, B, and C, and then the product of the elements uh, is one. And then this is a weird definition, I think, but if you look at a triangle, uh, it makes more sense. So here we have a triangle in the hyperbolic plane. The triangle has uh, angles pi over A, pi over B, and pi over C. And then we can, um, we can understand the reflections of this triangle, and then we can understand the orientation uh, per certain isometries of this triangle. And those are exactly our generators. So here we can have, we see delta A and delta B, just flipping our triangle, uh, but making it orientation per second. 
And then I drew the triangle over the hyperbolic plane because oh, those are the only triangles that we are, going, we are going to consider. So we only consider hyperbolic triangles. And that's to say that this quantity is less than zero. Uh, great. So um, with those triangular groups in mind, we can uh, define triangular modular curves. So how do we construct them is we can um, define an embedding from delta uh, from our triangle group into matrices over two by two matrices over i. So with this embedding uh, that can be given explicitly, we can we can construct an action over the upper half plane of this triangle group, and then our triangular modular curve is just going to be given by a quotient of the of the action of this triangle group over uh, the hyperbolic plane. So in a picture, how this looks like is here we have the triangle with angles pi over four, pi over four, pi over four. So triangle group four, four, four. And then when we consider this quotient, uh, here I have a picture of the fundamental domain. So you get a P1, which is really nice, and it's compact. So proved by example. Um, great. So um, once we have the construction of triangular modular curves, we can also define level of structure, just like you do with modular curves in general. Um, and, but it's a little bit more tricky in this case. So you're going to take a prime, div no dividing to ABC. Again, look at the gray box. If, uh, oh, no, no gray box later. Uh, OK, so B, no dividing A, B, and C. And then we are going to consider this number field. It looks very scary with a bunch of cosines until you, you remember that cosine, cosines are given by uh, roots of unity. So this field E is just contained in a cyclotomic field, in a big cyclotomic field. Okay. So from this field, we are going to take a prime, uh, leaving our, our rational prime P. Uh, and then uh, it turns out that there is a homomorphism uh, that goes from our triangle group into two by two matrices with coefficients on the residue field of that, of that prime. Um, and then PXL uh, here just means PSL and PG or PGL. It depends on the prime that we choose and look at the gray box if you are curious about which one it is. Yep. So once we have this uh, homomorphism, we can define the level of structure. So we are going to take this homomorphism and then our congruence of proof, gamma uh, of P, is just going to be the kernel. Uh, of the homomorphism. So it's contained in the triangle group. And then our triangular modular curve of level B, um, so it depends on the triple that we input for the triangle, and the prime is just given by the quotient of the action of this congruence of group on the upper half. Yep. Yeah. So uh, for the P dividing to ABC, we construct this. And then if you are curious about what happens when P divides to ABC, we, can, um, ha we have a similar definition. Um, but it's kind of weird. Um, okay, so we have our level of structure, and now we just have a uh, when we want to prove finite, finiteness of statements, we just have a little uh, problem. So um, let me tell you about it. So here is an example. We are going to consider triples two, three, c. So we are going to fix two, three, and then c is going to be powers of a prime any prime above five. Um, and then once you construct these fields, um, E, uh, where you construct the level of structure, they are all given by uh, Q, Q set at two Z plus. And then the prime is totally ramified in, those, in these um, fields. It doesn't matter what your exponent K is. And then we always have a cover like this, right? So we always have, um, these curves sitting all on top of 2, 3, P. Uh, and it turns out that these curves are all isomorphic. So we wouldn't have a finitely many um, theorem because these curves like, are kind of different, but they are all isomorphic, right? So what we want to do is um, define something that fixes this problem. And then um, 
what we are going to say is that a hyperbolic triple, ABC, is admissible for a prime P if the order under, uh, if the order of each generator uh, of the triangle group under that of homomorphism, uh, pi P that we defined, is exactly S. So in these examples, the problem was that the order, for example, of, of delta PK it was delta, the order of delta P was P. So uh, that fixes these kind of infinitely many examples. Uh, so for the rest of this talk, a, B, and a, B, C is going to be a hyperbolic admissible triple. You can read up this. Okay. So um, now we define triangular modular curves, level structure. So we want to define congruence of curves, right? Our favorite X nodes and X ones in modular curves. So again, uh, it, this works kind of the same as in modular curves. We are going to define H naught to be the subgroup of PXL. Remember, PSL or PGL, depending on the prime, um, is the image of the upper triangular matrices in XL um, two. So that's our congruence gamma gamma zero p, and then our triangular modular curve with level p x naught is going to be just defined by the quotient of the upper half plane by this congruence of curve. So same game as before. Um, so we by construction we get these maps from x p to x naught of p to x one, and remember that we convince ourselves that x one is just p one. So what we get is that. Uh, the map from xp to x1 or the map from x0 to x1 are belly maps. So here is an example with 2, 4, 4, I think. Uh, so this is your x0 and this is your xp. So uh, they are covers. Uh, yeah, they project to p1 and they are ramified at branch at three points. So they are belly maps. So uh, this is going to be important later. Mm. And then we can do something similar for X ones. Okay. Um, so uh, with the definitions in mind, now we can give um, a description of oh, term. So from these covers, you can convince yourself that all you need to compute the genus of, for example, X naught of P is the degree of this cover and then the ramification behavior of this cover and then just use Riemann Hurwitz. Okay, so um, understanding the degree is quite easy. It just depends on the prime and the residue field. Um, degree, but understanding the ramification comes from this lemma that uh, it's just very cool that it works out this way. So we're going to take G, it doesn't matter, it can be PSL, PGL. Um, and Q, FQ here is going to be just our, our residue field of the prime we choose. Um, again, a hyperbolic admissible triple. Um, and then if you take an element, sigma s in G that has order s, then you can understand the ramification behavior of the cover uh, really, really easily. So you have orbits of length s, like as many orbits of length s as you can have. And then you can have zero, one, or two um, fixed points. And that's it. And that's just given by the divisibility um, of Q plus one P or Q minus one. Uh, so uh, the degree of the cover turns out to be Q plus one. So you, if S divides Q plus one, you only get orbits of length S. If S divides Q, which under admissibility conditions just means that S equals P, you get one fixed point. And then if S divides Q minus one, you get two fixed points. Okay, so once you have uh, the ramification behavior, you can um, find a formula for the genus. You can compute the genus. Um, and uh, once you can compute the genus, you can also bound, uh, give bounds for the genus. So, well, with a fixed genus, sorry. So we're gonna fix a G naught, a genus. Uh, so we can, uh, we can bound with this fixed genus the pop uh, the ramification the sorry the residue the size of the residue field of p. So we fix that genus g, and then we can give a bound for q. Okay, so this starts to convince you that there are finally many curves 
with an even genus, but it's kind of weird, right? Because we still have a chi of A, B, and C, and this looks like it depends on A, B, and C, but then you ask what's the answer for every question, for everything, for, uh, and the answer is 42. So <laughs> you, you put a one over 42 there. Uh, this just comes from um, bounding chi is really, uh, chi, uh, yeah, can be bounded. And then if you plug in through 237, that's the worst that you can do. And then you get one over 42. So if you fix a genus, you can bound, bound Q that bounds the, the many primes that you can have. And then you, from a bound of Q, you can also bound A, B, and C. So you get a result of finally many curves uh, with genus G naught um, by this uh, by this bound. And then um, from our work, we also obtain a, an explicit formula for the genus, but I'm just not going to write it there. Okay, so now we have pr proven that we have finally many curves x naught of a b c comma p. Um, but now we want to know which ones are they, right? We want to enumerate them. Uh, and we have an algorithm that enumerates all of these curves. So how this works is you just want to choose a genus. Um, and you want a list of all the triples a, b, and c, and all the primes. Here, uh, for the algorithm, we just um, compute the norm of the prime um, such that the curve x naught of ABC comma P has genus bounded by G. Okay, so uh, when, how it goes is really easy. Once you have the bound from before, you just generate a list of all possible Q values. You can do that because you have a bound for Q, remember? And then for each Q, you find all Q admissible hyperbolic triples. So those are just values of A, B, and C that divide Q plus one, uh, P or Q minus one. So there are finally many. And then you just compute the genus with our understanding of the ramification of this cover. Uh, and again, this just means so, uh, you check divisibility of Q plus one, Q minus one, or P, and then you're done. And then if you get a small genus, you add the triple to the list. So um, that's how it goes. And then here is a peek at our magma implementation on this code. So we are just looking for the count uh, of, bounded, uh, of genus bounded by 100 of our x nodes. Um, so it took 77 seconds. You can, maybe you cannot scan it with the thing there, but um, it's going to be there before. That's our a link for our GitHub repository. Um, yes, and this, this, um, this thing is counting them, but also enumerating them. So you can actually get uh, a list of all these curves. Um, and then going back to our main theorem, that's how it worked. So um, now we can understand what we, were, what we wrote before. So we're fixing a genus G. And then we prove that there are finally many for all type, type triangular modular curves, X naught of ABC comma P of genus G with non-trivial prime level P. And the number of curves um, in the small genus cases are 56, 130, and 180. I mean, and these are, the inter these are some of the interesting ones, right? Before, because at least genus zero and one, because they tell you, uh, for which cases you have a hope of finding infinitely many rational points, right? Um, great. And then some future work that we would like to study is computer explicit leads from composite for composite level. Here, uh, things get quite harder. Uh, the formulas get quite harder. So if you have questions, you can ask later. Um, we also would like to find models of these curves. So we know that they have genus zero and one, for example, and we want to find models of the curves to try to find rational points. Um, and how this goes is these are belly maps. So we have some hope of finding models. Uh, so here is an example of one that we found. So X naught of three, three, four comma P seven. So just a prime above seven. Um, this one has genus zero. It's in our list of genus zero. And then it turns out that this curve is defined over a number field with a polynomial 
defining polynomial this, and then this curve turns out to be isomorphic to P1 over that number two. And then uh, you can go in another direction. So here we are only considering uh, congruence of curves gamma, zero, gamma node and gamma one, but you can try to do the same for all, um, uh, sorry, yeah, for all subgroups um, of the triangle group. And then our conjecture is that you again get finally many uh, curves with fixed genus. Okay, and then just to end, here is a list of the output of uh, X dot of ABC comma the norm of the prime of genus zero. Maybe that uh, QR code is gonna work better. But yeah, these are all the, uh, all the triples, the admissible triples, and then the norms of the prime uh, such that the curve has genus zero. And again, that's a link for our GitHub repository. That's it, thank you. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Anita, and uh, kudos for putting forward to your appearance. Is there a good way from this point of view to say identify the nodality or is it like to figure out what these are hyperlocating? Yeah, so uh, to understand the nodality, I guess you have maps to P1, so you can bound it. Uh, but I don't know if you can compute it explicitly, but at least you get good bounds. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But you can give it, you can sort of reduce this to a, a shorter one. Yeah. Um, if I may ask remotely, uh, looking at your list, it looks like almost all of the ABCs are in the uh, Takeuchi list of arithmetic triangle groups. I see one exception at two, six, and seven. Yeah. <laughs> um, is that also, I mean, I know that not, just because they're, they're triangle groups doesn't necessarily mean, oh, I'm sorry, two, three, 15 and two, three, 13 are there also. Yeah, so there are a few of those. Um, do, you, do you know if there are any others for which it's, it's hyperbolic triangle. I mean, it's arithmetic, but it's not actually a Shimura curve because the map to SL2 is not just one of those that gives Shimura curves. Yeah, that's a great question. So in genus zero, the list of genus zero is kind of misleading because most of them are arithmetic. But then when you add the genus, you start finding things that are not arithmetic. And then their arithmetic degree grows a lot. I think in genus two, we find some with arithmetic degree sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not a question that two, three infinity group is uh, of the proof. Yes. But you have two, three, five. Why don't you have seven? Yes, great question. Thanks for asking. So yeah, two, three infinity is a, it's just FPSL2, right? So you can you are expecting to find all the modular curves of genus zero. And two, three, infinity seven lives here. So um so uh, this just means, I mean, if you find a matrix uh, of order infinity with coefficients in F7, that's just a matrix of order seven. So uh, under admissibility conditions, that will be just isomorphic to these two, three, seven, comma seven. Yes, so they appear in the list, but they are given there. Uh, I don't know, this is sort of speculation, but um, knowing how much value effort has been expended in optimizing value maps, I'll ask sort of the other question. Is there another way to find models for these curves rather than you have, you have more structure here? I'm wondering if you think we're going to get some other feature of the problem that we do know another method for finding maps. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I, I guess I haven't thought about it. Yeah, I, I was just expecting Pelly Maps to give the answer. They, they actually, I, I mean, it's kind of tricky. The, the reason why the example was there is because one of the, it's one of the only examples that gives it to you really fast. 
Uh, but yeah, I haven't thought about it. Right. Before uh, a fight breaks out here, it's like. <laughs> <laughs>